What's up guys, Barry Gaming here, back with some more Idle Heroes, and today we're going to be going over a topic that I know a lot of you guys are really, really asking about, and that is, who should I build out of the three Transcendence Heroes? So, yes, we have all three of them, we've used all three of them, we've actually had a chance to use them in pretty much every single game mode, I'm still waiting to use Asmodel in Aspen Dungeon, but besides that, we have a pretty good grasp on what hero you should be building as a community. I'm pretty sure there's a pretty solid consensus across the board. This is kind of like one topic that I don't think anybody is trying to argue in any different manner or faction, but we're gonna go over each hero and explain who and where this hero is going to be more optimally played. So I think what we should start off with is probably the first and original transcendence hero and that is sword flash shia so of course she was the very first one she is an assassin she's kind of like the only assassin in the game that's even worth using most of the rest are not or they're just a buffer like rogan but let's go over where she works best so sword flash shia has some places where she she works really well number one of course she can help you get to aspen dungeon death 100 now if you don't have a ticks i don't know why because most normal players Build the ticks nowadays, but if you don't have a ticks, Sword Flash will help you in just about every single wave on your way from death 50 to 100, minus Amin Ra waves, because of course she does have a very, very big heal uh, with impeccable flow after she kills a target. So the thing that makes her really good in somewhere like that is because number one, she has impeccable flow, which lets her basic and her active turn her damage dealt into healing on her, which is really good. Sustain in Aspen Dungeon is amazing. She has very, very high attack value baseline. So things like a Splendid or even just a Glittery AMB really gives her a lot of damage reduction. Uh, one other thing that is really, really nice is her ability to get Sharpness. Now, Sharpness is that really annoying swirl around her that basically lets her dodge the next active or basic attack received, and then she'll also have a chance to deal damage multiple times to the lowest target or lo lowest HP target on the enemy side. This dodge is very good in Aspen Dungeon because it completely nullifies damage, but what it doesn't nullify are things like Amon Ra's curse. Even though she dodges the attack, the curse will still get put back on her, which will then make her heal for huge amounts of damage and essentially one-shot her. So she does have a use there. Uh, her abilities overall are just very good damage, like insanely, insanely high damage. Probably one of the highest damage dealers in the game in general. Uh, she can do some of the best single target damage. She can do huge aoe damage if she has impeccable flow that she gets after killing an enemy um her biggest her biggest payoff though is definitely this sharpness effect that allows her to dodge when it comes to pvp i think we can all agree out of all three heroes sword flash is by far the most dominating in pvp out of the three transcendence heroes a lot of times these fights come down to one-on-one -on -one battles between sword flash and sword flash or sword flash and queen or something like that and honestly the dodge effect is the most overpowered effect in the game if you guys didn't know early on block wasn't really a thing instead of block heroes had dodge like mickey mickey was a crazy crazy dodge machine they removed dodge from the game because they thought hmm this is a little bit too hard to balance and it's too strong. Fast forward like two, two and a half years. Guess what? <laughs> Dodge is back. Block is still in the game, but Dodge is back on some really strong heroes. And it is pretty game breaking. She has a chance to do the highest damage in PvP. Uh, she has the highest survivability with that Dodge effect. If you are looking for an all around good damage dealer in PvE modes outside of the Vortex, um, She's great if you're looking for a void boss. The void arc bosses, Sword Flash is one of the best at that as well. Um, but if you're looking for straight up PvP, and really if you're just going for like end game PvP, Sword Flash is definitely your pick. Now, next up is Scarlet Queen Halora. She was the second one that came out, and honestly, she is probably the most well balanced overall well-rounded hero we have seen in the game in an extremely long time she is good she's good in every single game mode there's literally not a game mode scarlet queen is not 
within like the top two of useful heroes i mean just starting off first aspen dungeon she is one of the best heroes for aspen dungeon death 100 pushes uh her abilities are very good she has a little bit of self-sustain her basic attack hits three enemies and deals huge damage while also lowering their crit chance um which is very good against Asmodel waves. That's one wave that a lot of people struggle with are any waves with Asmodel. She can pretty much handle every one of them. She has a really cool Royal Guard, which of course this doesn't help in uh, Aspen Dungeon, but we will go over it later on. And then her active is just a huge devastating ability. Uh, 1280% attack against all enemies, then also applies a two round bleed. So essentially it hits three times that's pretty crazy. Plus, she has debuffs for the enemies on all of her abilities. Really, really solid. If you run her with an upgraded AMB, she will pretty much carry you all the way to death 100. There's not many waves she can't do. Waves that she does struggle with are, of course, like the Amon Ra waves as well. I have seen her beat some Amon Ra waves. I've seen her lose to some Amon Ra waves. But with the upgraded AMB, she can take just about any quad wave there is in the game that does not have a penny. Or an Amon Ra. If you have a Penny on the other's team, you're probably gonna have to use a Demon Potion. But even then, her AoE ability, it'll hit every single target. So she will easily clear out Penny Waves if she has energy. Uh, Aspen Dungeon, perfect, amazing. The other thing is, she is very, very useful in every single game mode. Every single game mode, mainly due to two things. And actually, you know what? We're gonna just say this is down to one thing and that is the royal guard ability this is useful in pvp this is us useful in pve it's useful in every single game mode when the battle starts it grants allies except herself queen's guard and it also increases their all damage dealt by 20 percent so literally the beginning of combat you're already increasing your ticks your other heroes 20 percent all damage dealt that is a huge buff and then on top of that, whenever she does get hit by an active or basic attack, everybody is going to attack dealing 1000% of their attack rating. That is some huge damage. You've seen it a ton on this channel, watching Queen's pings just completely melt enemies when they hit her. Um, you've seen our upgraded Adas doing like 7 to 10 million damage per ping just because the enemy hit the queen so that is a lot of damage but this right here the first part all damage dealt by 20 percent increase that makes her viable in every game mode in tower she can help in void vortex she's one of those requirements you need that extra 20 percent damage to push in void vortex uh she has uses in realms gate she has uses in pretty much every game mode and I would argue she is, she's borderline tied in PVP for second place out of Transcendence Heroes between her and Asmodel. I would actually kind of bump her up and make her number two if it was my opinion, but I know other people are saying they're having really good luck with Asmodel in PVP right now. Um, her normal skin looks just as cool too. It, it actually looks a little cooler, I think. But I mean, you got to use that skin, right? Uh, but overall, she's really, really strong. If this is your, if you're looking for your first transcendence hero, I mean, there's no other. Op you pick queen. There really is no other option. She's gonna help you and has use in every single game mode. She's number two in PvP behind Sword Flash. Uh, so even if you already have a Sword Flash, you probably want to pick up a Scarlet Queen. If you have Scarlet Queen as your first transcendence hero and you're trying to figure out who your second hero is. Um, then it's a little bit of a toss-up. It really is. We don't have too much data about Vortex testing with Asmodel just yet. I have used him on my account, but of course my account is not very optimal for seeing if it can push to Defiler. Uh, we don't have ticks and you pretty much need ticks and you need Ignis feed. You need, you need a lot of pay to win side of things. You need eight demon bells minimum. There's a lot of stuff you need. And of course I don't have them right now either. I don't even have the demon bells set up because well, Ormus Workshop isn't open. So number two in PVP, number one pretty much everywhere else for support. She is just the best overall well rounded transcendence hero and in my opinion is definitely the number one pick for everybody's first transcendence hero last up we do have the brand new asmodel the dauntless so we've been doing a lot of testing with him we've had a lot of luck with crown 
But uh, one thing with Asmodel is you don't necessarily you don't necessarily see all of his benefit when you just look at the stat sheet at the end of a combat. He is made to do a lot of damage. Uh, his revenge ability sadly is not a mark. Uh, I really would have thought revenge would have been mark damage, just like the crit marks are for regular Asmodel. I'm wondering if it's a bug. Maybe it's not. But his uh, active ability has a chance to do a ton of damage. His active hits the whole back line, reducing their armor and their speed by 50 for four rounds. And as you guys know, speed is pretty much everything in the PvP meta right now because you only have two to three rounds to try to kill the enemy because, let's be honest, PvP is over in two to three rounds. Uh, his biggest disadvantage in PvP is that he is kind of hard countered if it comes down to one-on-one. -on -one. If you have an Asmodel and the enemy has a Sword Flash, that Sword Flash one-on-one -on -one does not lose. Uh, you might think, oh, but Barry, you know, he has multiple hits on his attack. She can only dodge the first part. No, she can dodge every single layer of damage in his Dauntless Smash, which means if he goes up against a Sword Flash at the end of combat, he has a 100% chance to lose the battle. That is why Sword Flash is the dominant number one PvP pick. Uh, he does have some really cool abilities, though. He has, uh, as he uses his basic attack, it has a multi-layer hit as well. It also gives him control immunity. Uh, his last man standing is really strong with if he's like the strongest hero on the battlefield, and you have a lot of enemy or a lot, lot of allies dying before you because when they die, they will restore health to him, and then they will also increase is all damage dealt which is really good so if you can if he's the last man standing he's going to start hitting very very hard his biggest bonus that you don't really see when you just watch combat is valorous guardian so at the beginning of battle and at the end of each round grounds one ally with the lowest hp glorious support now this is huge this gives that person 35 percent um actually i think it's only 25 percent if he's not void imprinted uh, but that's still 25% all damage reduction. That is really, really strong. It does have some other effects, but that right there is the biggest thing. You've seen it when we did the Bell Rain video. Um, he's always protecting her. He's keeping her alive for a lot, a lot longer. Literally, literally lowering the damage coming in by 25% is huge. That's literally the difference of life and death. Like it really is. Um, but yeah, he's he's a good PvP hero. He can do some good PvE damage in broken spaces, in Flame Shrine, places like that. But really, we don't need a solution to those anymore. Those are already very easy game modes. We will be testing him in Aspen Dungeon coming up this week. I'm not seeing him being very good because the only sustain he has is based off allies dying. And in Aspen Dungeon, you don't have allies dying. But he could just do a lot of damage uh, with his basic attack. Uh, and then his active... Active should do really good damage with demon potions. I just don't think he's a better option than like a Tix or something like that. And I don't think he's a better option than Sword Flash or Queen either. He's much more of a ramp up hero based on his allies dying. And in a game mode where you're by yourself, not that good. Um, I know a lot of you guys really wanted to build Asmodel. But in my opinion, all of my experiences, I believe... I believe you shouldn't be built until you have the other two first so far. Uh, and at that point, that probably means you're not going to build them because then we're going to have Jara potentially coming out in the future. We're going to have a forest. We're going to have a dark hero coming out. Um, he's good. Let me just put it this way. I want to make sure everybody's clear. Out of all the heroes in the game, I still believe he is number three on the list behind Sword Flash and Queen. But I definitely believe Sword Flash is better than him in PvP and Queen has more uses in all game modes he feels like he feels like a sword flash just not as good when it comes to pvp he can put up some huge damage numbers but he just doesn't have that utility to keep himself alive when it comes down to one-on-one -on -one combat against a sword flash so that is why i do rank him below sword flash in pvp i know a lot of people wanted to build him but honestly if if this is your first e is this is your first transcendence hero you are building Scarlet Queen is the pick. If you are going for endgame PvP, Sword Flash is your number one pick. If you already have one or the other, you could consider building Asmodel. But I still believe both Queen and Sword Flash will serve your account much better 
than an Asmodel. So hopefully this help clears it up, lets you know where each hero excels, and hopefully you know why I kind of rank them the way I do now. If you do have any questions, drop it in the comments down below. Um, we'll keep monitoring, see see how Asmodel's doing. If, if there's an update, if, we, if he's broken in like Asm Dungeon, we'll let you know immediately. If we find a way to use him in Vortex, again, we'll let you know as, the, as well there. But I just don't see his kit being that useful when it comes to Vortex. So hopefully you guys enjoy this one. Hopefully you guys have fun with your first Transcendence Hero. And I'll see you guys next time.